Shalom, shalom, brother Abaya. First, we give all praise and glory to the Heavenly Father, which is Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Yahweh being the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shah being the Son, who people unknowingly call him Jesus Christ. Lord willing, you're enduring, you praying, you fasting, you giving alms, you're doing everything you need to do to make your calling and election sure in these last days. Also, we give peace and blessings to whomsoever may not be watching this, yet they believe in the Most High God and they're keeping the commandments. Right, and they believe in Yahweh Shah. And I also want to give peace and blessings to whomsoever is watching this as well. Now, the topic of this video is going to be Is Yahweh Shah in the Old Testament? Because you got a lot of false prophets, you got a lot of uh, what's called antichrist that don't believe in Christ, they only believe in the Old Testament only, and that's not of the Lord. Hold on, close the door real quick. Give me one second, right? And that's not of the Lord, man. That's false prophet, and that's of Satan. So, let's get uh, first John. All right, chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 18, and it reads, Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. So you have a lot of Antichrist. An Antichrist is just one man. He's a uh, politician, right? He got the suit and tie on, and he got a red stamp on his forehead. No, the Antichrist are people who just don't believe in Christ. And there's a lot of people, whether it be of the, whether that be of the other nations or even the people in the truth. He may have fringes on. He may have a tight metre on. But guess what? He don't believe in Christ. And that's an Antichrist. And you got to watch out for certain people like that. All right. So let's get this real quick in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1. And it reads, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. And that should, be, that should be one of the main questions you should be asking people when you meet them. Do you believe in Yahweh Shah? Do you believe in Christ? If they say no, guess what? It's either you can bring it down to them and see what goes on, or you can pack up shop and keep it pushing, right? Because many false prophets are going out into the world. So there's many false prophets in the world that says that, look, Yahweh Shah, he didn't come in the flesh. There's no such thing as Yahweh Shah. You got these men who mock the name of Yahweh Shah, right? You got to watch out for people like that. Their spirit is not right. Verse 2. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Yahweh Shah Hamashiach is come in the flesh is of God. So if you're of the Most High God and the Lord called you and chose you and drew you drew you unto him, then you, be, you will be confessing Yahweh Shah. You might have a shirt that says Yahweh, Yahweh Shah. You might have a chain that says Yahweh, Yahweh Shah. You know, you'll be confessing the Lord like um, Psalms 22 and verse 22. Confessing the name of the Lord, man, in the congregation, right? Uh, verse three, and every spirit that confesseth not that Yahweh Shah Hamashiach is come in the flesh is not of God, and this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Is in the world. So that spirit of Antichrist of denying the Lord, it's already in the world. You probably walk to walk past a brother, you greet him in the name Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah. And guess what? He look at you funny. He, he might say, who is Yahweh Shah? I don't know him. And he keep it pushing. You got to watch out for that, brother, man. Right? Don't be around brothers who don't believe in Yahweh Shah. Because that evil spirit can hop on you. He might bring out a verse you're not really learned in the scriptures. He might try to confound you. And you get confounded because you don't study. You don't read. You don't fast. You're not sincere. You can conf you get confounded. And now guess what? You don't believe in Yahweh Shah. That's how a lot of people go back to that Old Testament or go to Old Testament only. Because they don't study. They're not well, they're not rooted in the faith. So that's why we're about to go into this. And Lord Willing is edifying to show you that Yahweh Shah, he's in the Old Testament. He made his um, so-called guest appearances in the Old Testament. He's prophesied in the Old Testament. And if you know, I don't want to get too deep, but certain people in the, in the um, Old Testament is Yahweh Shah in a regeneration. But let's not get too deep into it, man. All right, so let's get um let's go first let's get Genesis chapter 14. This book of Genesis, chapter 14 and verse 18. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. So who is this Melch Melchizedek, king of Salem, that brought forth bread and wine? And he was the priest of the Most High God. That's Yahushua. Because Yahushua, he is the priest of the Most High God. You get the Most High God, then you got Yahushua, who ministers to the Lord on the behalf of our sins. Now, if you knew the law, it would be easy to break this down. 
because the high priest every year will have to make an atonement for the whole nation of Israel by sprinkling blood on a mercy seat. And that's what Yahweh did as the high priest for us all. Right. Verse 19. And he blessed them and said, blessed be Abram of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. Now, let's go to Hebrews chapter seven, verse one. No, Chesedek, he didn't have no dad. He didn't have no mom. He just is. Right. He just is. He kind of materialized on the earth. He was a priest. Same thing with Yahweh shot. All right, let's get this real quick. This is the book of Hebrews, right? It's a lot here. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, and verse 1. It's a lot here. And it reads, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but may like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Who is known as the Son of God? Yahweh. He's known as, as, as the Son of God, right? That's one. Now, Melchizedek is Yahweh. Again, Yahweh has many guest appearances in the Old Testament. He comes in a volume of the book. Let me get that real quick. Let's get Psalms. Chapter 40 and verse 7 real quick. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 40, 40, chapter 40 and verse 7. Then said, I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yeah, thy law is within my heart. So when you read the Bible, that word referring to John chapter 1 and verse 1, the word is Yahusha. He's the word. So when you read the Old Testament, the Apocrypha, the New Testament, you're reading all about Yahusha. If you have ears to hear. Let's get another account. Let's go to Genesis chapter 18. Right? And, and Lord willing, you can receive this. You no. Know, Lord willing, you can receive it and things of that nature. Uh, Genesis chapter 18. I'm sorry, verse 1. It reads, and the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day, talking about Abraham. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. So Abraham saw three men. Two of them were angels. One was the Lord himself. Verse 3, And said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, Pass not away, I pray thee, from my servant. Now, we know that's the Lord and Abraham speaking. So let's jump down to verse uh, 10. I'm oh, sorry, verse 9. And it reads, And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in a tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in a tent door, which was behind him. Now, we know that the Most High God, he was never born. He was never created. He just is. That's why his name is Yahweh. He is or he exists, right? So that can't be talking about the Most High God. Who is who is this Lord? And on um, all caps, is Yahweh. He came as Isaac, right? Let's get a precept to show you this real quick. Let's get um. I have it ran down. Come. Let's get Hebrews eleven verse seventeen, right? Yahweh came as Isaac. If brothers have ears to hear, referring to Genesis twenty two and verse six to verse seven as that burnt offering, right? Uh, this is the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, and verse 17. And it reads, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. So who's known as the only begotten son? Yahweh. And you can draw the parallel. Isaac is known as the only begotten son. Because when you read Genesis 18, Yahweh told Abraham he will come in the time of life, meaning in nine to ten months in the mother's womb, and he would be born as Isaac, right? Let's get another precept. Look at Colossians. Because regeneration is in the Bible, and the Lord the Lord been here forever, you know? You just don't hear about someone for one time and you forget about them. No, that, that doesn't happen. But this Colossians 1 and 15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. So Yahweh Shah is known as the firstborn of every creature. Isaac was known as the firstborn, right? So you got to draw the parallel you know, through the precepts to understand what's going on. Let's get another account, though, right? 
Let's get 2 Samuel. Now, this is a classic. It's a cold cut right here. You got Old Testament saying, you know, Yahweh Shah is not an Old Testament. But this is a cold cut. And they can't break it down. They're confounded. All right, this is the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 7. I'm going to start at verse 12. And it reads, and this is uh, Nathan the prophet, you know, talking to David, you know. But verse 12, and when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Now, who came after David? Solomon. Verse 13, he shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. Now, this is talking about Solomon, but on another foe, it's talking about Yahusha. Because you may ask, how is it talking about Yahusha? When did Solomon ever get beat with stripes? When did Solomon's kingdom ever rule, um, ever lasted forever? He died. Right? This is talking about Yahusha, man. Let's get a priest to validate that. Yahusha is the one who got beat by um with stripes, not Solomon. Let's get First Kings real quick. Chapter four and verse twenty-four. First Kings chapter four and verse twenty-four, and it reads, "For he had dominion over all the region on this side of the river, from Tisfa, 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 even to Hazal, over all the kings on this side of the river, and he had peace on all sides round about him." So Solomon had peace. He didn't have no wars. He didn't get beat up. He didn't get shot down in battle. His own people didn't um, kill him and things of that nature. The so-called white man didn't kill him. So Solomon had peace. So how can 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12 to verse 14 only be talking about Solomon when verse 14 don't apply to him? Because that applies to Yahweh. If brothers have ears to hear, if ears to hear Solomon, Yahweh was Solomon. Solomon was Yahweh. But he wasn't Yahweh at that time. Yahweh came in a New Testament. But his spirit was in Solomon. Brothers have ears to hear Right. And when you read Matthew chapter um, 27, when you read Luke chapter uh, 20, 22, 23, when you read John chapter, you know, uh, 18, 19, 20, you read about your house getting scourged and getting beat because that's all prophesied in the Old Testament because your house is in the Old Testament. All right. Let's get another precept. Let's get another um, account. So let's get another account. Let's get Psalm chapter 22 and verse 16 and it reads for dogs have compassed me the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me they pierced my hands and my feet so this is david writing a psalm and um david was a prophet he's writing in the spirit so when it says that they pierced my hands and my feet you read about david david you know it said he fell asleep with his forefathers meaning he didn't die in battle he didn't get beat up he didn't get his neck chopped off. He died peacefully. So when did he ever get his hands pierced or his legs pierced? Because that didn't happen. That happened to Yahweh, whom people call Jesus Christ. Right? Because why Yahweh, he's um, prophesied in the Old Testament. Because he comes in a volume of the book. But yet people can't understand that because their eyes are darkened. And the Lord's not dealing with that. Right? The Lord's not dealing with that. Let's get another precept. Or let's get another uh, account. Let's get Isaiah. And there's many accounts. There's some accounts that I'm not even going to touch on. Like, if, for example, that's, um, I didn't um, write down. When you read Joshua, hey, Joshua, I believe it's chapter 5, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Guess what? The captain of the host, that's Yahweh, man. There's many accounts in the Bible of Yahweh making his so-called guest appearance in the Old Testament. But this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, and verse 6, and it reads, For unto us a child is born, Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now, a lot of, a lot of people might say this is the Most High God because it says the Everlasting Father, but it says a son is born. The Most High God is never born. He's never created. He just exists. So this has to be talking about Yahweh because he's the only other person who's from Everlasting. The only re the reason why it's called the everlasting Father because He created everything. When you um, refer to Colossians one and fifteen on down, right, verse seven, and it reads, "Of the increase of His government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David 
and upon his kingdom to order it. So this hey, this man right here came from the lineage of David, right? Not all men come from the lineage of, lineage of David. Ezekiel, Jeremiah, right? All these different men don't come from the lineage of David. Yahweh does, though, when you read Matthew chapter 1, right? And upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And hey, this hasn't happened yet, right? The Lord, when he comes back, he's going to establish the kingdom, you know, in due season. But this is talking about Yahweh, man. It's not talking about Michael the Archangel. It's not talking about David himself. It's not talking about these other men. This is talking about Yahweh Shah. Let's get another, um, another, uh, what's it called? Account. Now, this one's the classic, and, and it's the go-to, right? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, and verse 1. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he, and that he's talking about Yahweh Shah. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry, dry ground, he hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Right, Yahweh wasn't the most comely, handsome man. He wasn't looking like Caesar, um, that Caesar Borgia, you know, with dog string hair, blue eyes, and uh, you know, and things in that nature. He came as an austere man, as a rough man. Right, verse three. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we, we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But it's the point. I'm going to keep going down. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. And that's one. Who was ever wounded for the Israelites' transgressions? He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. There's no account of Ezekiel getting beat with stripes. There's no account of Isaiah, of Sam, um, Samuel, of um, Michael the archangel getting beat for the iniquity of the children of Israel. There's no account of it. David did not get beat for the, children, the iniquity of the children of Israel. But that did happen to Yahweh when you read the New Testament, the so-called New Testament. Verse 6, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shears and is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth, right? Because he's known as that sin and that burnt offering. That's why he's referred to as a lamb without spot, without blemish. Like you read about in first Peter, I believe chapter two and verse 22 on down. Verse eight. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. What does it mean he was cut off out of the land of the living? I mean, he was put to death. The so-called white, this, um, our own people, the Israelites, delivered um, Yahweh to the, to the Romans, the so-called white man, and the so-called white man put him to death for, the, um, for our transgressions. That didn't happen to anybody else in the Bible but him, man, huh? right? Verse 9, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. So he was perfect. Last time I checked Ezekiel, let me get a precept real quick. I'm going to stay in the same book. All right, we'll stay in the same book. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 64 and verse 6. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. So last time I checked, everybody in the Bible except Yahweh and the Most High God are perfect and blameless. Ezekiel went off, David went off, Abraham, right? Um, all of our, everybody went off in this flesh, but Yahweh was the only perfect and blameless man, right? Let's get another preach. Let's get another account. All right, let's get another account. If brothers have ears to hear, well, I meant by that though. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 7, and verse 13. And it reads I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. 
So who was the son of man and who was the ancient of days? The ancient of days would be the most high, referring to Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. So who was the son of man that came to the ancient of days? This son of man is the one and only Yahweh, Hamashiach, the anointed, right? The righteous, right? It's not Michael the archangel. It's not um, Raphael or Raphael. It's not Gabriel the archangel. It's Yahweh, man. Like, let's stop playing games, man. Like it's playing upon tables. Let me get, let's, let's get that precept from Proverbs eight and verse nine. It's playing upon tables to them that understand. This is a book of um, Proverbs chapter eight and verse nine, and it reads, "They are all plain to him that understandeth, understandeth, and write to them that find knowledge." So it's all playing upon tables to know Daniel chapter seven verse thirteen. The son of man is Yahweh. We all know this, man. Let's stop. Even though he's, a lot of people say it's Ezekiel, man. Which is going off, right? A lot of people say it might be Isaiah, it might be Ezekiel, because you know in Ezekiel chapter one, he's um he's known as the son of man. You know he saw the chariots and things of that nature. But where, when you read verse fourteen, and there was given him dominion and glory in the kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. When did Ezekiel ever have that? Or when will he ever have that? That's not going to happen. That's never prophesied about Ezekiel, nor Isaiah, or Michael the Archangel. That's talking about Yahweh, man. Like it says back in um, Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 to verse 7. Like it says in 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 12 to verse 14. It's all talking about Yahweh, Because he come in the volume of the book, man. Alright. Let's get another, let's get another um, slot here. Let's get another one. Let's get uh, Zechariah. We'll get a few more and close out. Let's get Zechariah 12 and verse 10. Actually, let's get Micah 5 first. Let's get Micah chapter 5 and verse 1. This is the book of Micah chapter 5 and verse 1. And it reads, Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He have laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. And that happened again in the time of the Roman Empire with Yahusha. He got smitten, you know, with um, with rods, man. He got smitten on the cheek. He got spat on. He got so he got jumped. He got so called buffeted. He got jumped, man. Right by these um Romans and by his own people. Right, he got jumped by his own people. Verse two, but thou Bethlehem, Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, who's going forth, whose goings. Fourth have been from old, from everlasting. Ezekiel is not from old, from, from everlasting. David is not. Who else? Everybody in the Bible except Yahweh is not because Yahweh created everything else. Let's get that precept. I keep quoting it. I could have brought it out earlier. Let's get that precept though in Colossians. Right? I, hey, I'm not, you not. Right? It's the book of Colossians, chapter 1, and verse, I'll start at verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, because the Most High created Yahweh and it gave him authority to create everything else. Like we're about to read, verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and vi invisible, whether they are like, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, talking about Yahweh. Everything was created by Yahweh. The Most High created um, created Yahweh. Then Yahweh created everything else. He's the one that's from old um, from old to everlasting. That's Michael five and verse one and verse two, man. Look, I said it's plain upon table. Let me get one more principle on that, man. It's plain upon tables. You just you just need the eye salve in this thing to um, be able to see. Let's get Sirach chapter thirty nine and verse twenty four. And it reads. As his ways are plain unto the holy, so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked, man. You see that? It's a stumbling block to believe on Yahweh. A lot of people don't believe on Yahweh. These modern day Pharisees would be your Old Testament onlys. Let me say that the other way. These Old Testament onlys nowadays would be your modern day Pharisees, man. All right? Because the Pharisees didn't believe, most of the Pharisees didn't believe in Yahweh. Same thing with these Old Testament onlys. They don't believe in Yahweh. It's madness, man. And God forbid that ever happens to myself or to whoever's watching this, man. God forbid. Because the Lord can easily take away that understanding and make you 
An antichrist, man. Just like that. Let's get one more. And again, like I said, that's a meaning, man. Like, like I said, you know, uh, I believe it's Joshua chapter 5. You got Psalm chapter 110 and verse 1. I mean, that's mean, that's many other, man. But this is a book of um second address. He's even in the apocrypha, man. So we went into the so-called Old Testament, and now we're in the apocrypha, which is part of the Old Testament as well. All right, this is the book of second address, chapter 7 and verse 28, and it reads, For my son, Yahweh shall be revealed with those that be with him, and they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. Because right, remember the um, Edris, Ezra, he was in the um, the Persian, the Persian, the Medo Persian captivity. So from that time to the Roman Empire, that's about four hundred years. All right, let's keep going though. Um, verse twenty nine. After 